Uh, the biological control agents that are important in brassica crops occur naturally and they can be expected to be found in most locations. So if we are to use them, it's important that we don't kill them. And so broad spectrum insecticides can have that effect, but there are also selective insecticides that can be used that don't have that effect. So in an IPM strategy, we don't rely totally on the biological control agents or the cultural controls, but they're the primary controls. If they're not enough for whatever reason, then we see chemicals as the support tool. And so if we use selective products, then we get the biological control agents working alongside with the chemicals. Certainly there's choices now that are available that weren't available a few years ago. And so it makes sense to me to use selective products alongside what you get for free, and that'll give you more sustainable control. In a lot of cases, uh, farmers are applying more than one pesticide, uh, so they could be using a fungicide as their, the main reason for going over a paddock, and there's a common perception that if they're, if they're going over the paddock, they might as well put in an insecticide anyway, just in case, uh, and it can't do any harm. So we think that's wrong in a lot of cases. So if broad spectrum insecticides are used, and they're usually the fairly cheap insecticides, uh, sure, it doesn't cost very much to put it in the tank, but if it kills the biological control agents that are doing a good job, then it actually can cause pest flare and make the situation worse. The, the two caterpillar pests that we get in brassicas, cabbage white butterfly and diamondback moth. Diamondback moth has a very short life cycle and is very capable of developing resistance to insecticides very quickly. It was the first agricultural pest in the world to develop resistance to DDT. And it did that only a few years after DDT was, was available. Uh, so resistance is a very big issue for brassica growers and uh, that's where the selection of, of insecticides is important, but also trying to integrate biological control with chemical control for diamondback moth uh, is, is particularly important. Uh, some of the farmers I've worked with, both in Australia and New Zealand, have, have pointed out that uh, when they know that beneficial insects are active, they feel much more comfortable when, uh, for whatever reason, they may not be able to get into the paddock to do any spraying. They know that there is still pest control going on and uh, that, that really makes a difference to them and their, their confidence in, in dealing with pests. Yeah, I, sort of, I don't think I'd ever go back to the um, bombing everything approach um, because this way, well, the chemicals are probably a little bit dearer per hectare, but like this year we've got away with one spray. In fact, I've got a, uh, another farmer that I do a little bit of work for at the weekends and um, he hasn't put any sprays on. It's basically nothing. And the, the um, beneficials have controlled the insects. They've actually done a really good job. So, um, so yeah, if we can sort of lean that way, it saves money, it's better for the environment and um, all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, I think that it's uh, a really no-brainer for using IPM concepts in the whole agricultural system. And of course in the cereals and the brassicas where it started, it's having an immediate impact now and it's really a matter of training of the staff to recognise the issues, to recognise the pests and what they're targeting and the beneficials that they need to protect and making good decisions around timings of the uh, chemicals that they may use, uh, what other methods of control they have to use. There are different levels of engagement from the farmers, but once they start to learn about what is going on in the field and see the opportunities that they can actually use natural systems, they get pretty keen to be engaged. Going forward, I think it's going to be one of the major innovations that farming has to keep costs down, one, 
and to look after the ground and keep the soil structures and biodiversity going a lot better. Um, I think, and you know, we're talking about resistance, it's going to happen, it's just a, um, how, how long it, it's going to be before it does. Um, but the other important point is that um, it's very, very expensive for the multinational chemical companies to actually uh, come up with new insecticides with new modes of action. And so we can't expect if we get resistance in our existing insecticides that there will be something on the shelf to replace them with. And so I think that's the other really important reason for doing this kind of work.